Hello everyone and welcome to Snap Take. It's our full guide for Miek. Our one series four card of the season comes with Annihilus and the Phoenix Force. Should you be opening your spotlight caches? Should you be using tokens? Should you go and get Miek and how do you want to do it? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. But first, we're going to invite you to hit that sub button, hit that like, hit that comment, help us fight that YouTube algorithm to spread and grow. We bring you more great snap content than anyone we have a video every single weekday also sunday saturdays we release the podcast that's seven days a week of long form marvel snap content with multiple decks every single day we'll have eight videos this week because there's an ota and we always do an ota video so there's an absolute ton for you if you hit that sub button please do so we also maintain a giveaway sheet, which is every active giveaway in Marvel Snap. You can find that sheet in the description to this video. Totally free to enter and win some great free stuff. We are also starting tomorrow giving away five more season passes since we hit 8,000 subs. You can use that for this season if you still need Scar, or you can use those for next season and you can try to win Black Swan. So if you're interested, please make sure you check that out. Tomorrow's video sub ring that notification bell they go up at 8 a.m eastern every single week our questions of the day vulcan wants to know about the leech nerf possibly and icy nova asks about a blob hit all right so leech is a symptom of an unhealthy meta fundamentally what leech is here for right leech can beat blob in a mirror and if you're running a card like darkhawk leech can make darkhawk really work leech can stop you from turning off limbo Leech being really, really great is the symptom of the meta being unhealthy. It's not the cause of the meta being really unhealthy. Um, although, like, because Kyara does such a great job of turning off so many answers, right? Leech comes back because Darkhawk can't exist, because Legion and Quake and all these other cards are really great with locations. Leech becomes the answer to helping the thing that's unhealthy become more consistent. And because there's not an early way to gain power, right? Like, they nerfed all the early ways to get power in Marvel Snap. Um, Ms. Marvel is significantly worse. Werewolf is gone. All the early Loki decks are gone. They hit all the bounce decks. They hit Annihilus. They hit all the ways to put power on the board to compete before a Leech would happen, which means you're stuck relying on that turn six, so Leech is great. I don't think Leech needs a nerf. I think several things need an un-nerf. I don't know if that should be Werewolf or what, but I think several of the early power sticks of the game need to exist for Marvel Snap to be healthier. One of the ways that that happens is Blob gets hit. Blob is just too big for too little work. In Thanos decks, he's regularly, th regularly 35 to 40 power. The high end to power for a single card before that was generally, without any extra work, just by playing the card, was Infinite, and that required you to skip a turn. So, that, so Infinite's power was fundamentally equivalent to dropping a 10 on 5 and a 10 on 6, or an 8 on 5 and a 12 on 6, which is even easier to conceptualize, right? Because that's dropping something like Vision into Magneto. That's Infinite's power. Two cards, right? Well, I could drop Infinite um, and Magneto and still, and this has happened, Infinite and Magneto and still have a regular old blob just be bigger, especially in Thanos. Play. That's a problem blob needs a hit. Are they going to do what they need to do in the OTA? I would be surprised. I'd expect Blob to like get some of his floor cut out and go down to being a um, 6-2. He can't be a 6-1 because Ravona is a card that exists. But I think uh, making him a 6-2 would do a lot of the work of bringing Blob. Um, making the low rolls for Blob a little bit worse, making cards like Maximus a little bit stronger, cards like Gladiator a little, little bit stronger. Not a lot stronger, but a little bit. Um, Releasing Blob at the same time they did Kara was certainly a choice they made in Snap, right? So that means only Valkyrie and Shadow King can really answer him, but the rest of the meta as Shadow King is basically a dead card, so it's really complicated. Blob needs a bigger hit. I think cop t uh, capping Blob at something like 30 power would be fine. I think saying Blob only eats the cards that started in your deck would be fine. I think um, Blob eats the top three cards of your deck would be fine. Blob gets half the power. Um, if it's anything above 20, if Blob goes above 30, he just explodes, would be fine. Anything to really bring Blob in, I think, is a necessity for the health of the game right now. 
models wonders if they release five cards a month and he gets six cards a month if he'll eventually be game complete plus if that's possible i mean if you spend it certainly it's possible that's not something you're going to be able to do for free uh free to play players the new spotlight system is now officially worse new spotlight system it's been out since uh july but the spotlight system is now officially worse than the previous system where we just got a bunch of tokens for free to play players so that sucks with the new card release um However, if you are a spender of still just season pass, it is my belief that for the time being, you can still with uh, a, now it's, I think, like a four or five month time period, get every card, which means, yes, if you get six cards a month, you'll eventually be game complete. Although it's likely if you're going to do so in a timely manner, it's going to cost you um, more than the $10 a month that would have before they added this extra card. Adding this extra card really did a number on the economy. Our friend Lauren Whatevs over at... Um, over at Marvel Snap Zone is currently writing an article examining this. We'll interview her when she's done, and we'll talk all about that. Direwolf asks if I skip turn one for info on opponent's deck, and no, never. But, 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 if I'm losing a game, I will stay in until a snap. And if I've already accepted a snap, I will stay until turn six, almost no matter what. Gathering that information helps make me a better snap player. This is especially true in Conquest, where I will often just not play cards, not give them information about my deck. like. If they're not snapping and they're getting ahead, I'll just let them get ahead until that snap oops, and take the extra information that I have more cards in their deck that I know about. If you'd like to have your question read out in tomorrow's video, leave one in the comments. Patreons get uh, extra benefit from this if they're willing. They can also just ask questions whenever, so check out snapjudgments.com slash Patreon if you have any interest. We'd always greatly appreciate the support. I do a lot of work to make that worth the value over there. All right, our card for this week is Miek. Miek is series four, 3,000 tokens. After each turn, if you discarded any cards, gain plus one power for each and move. Um, I mean, if you Modoc, he's like a one six one seven, right? Basically always, that's pretty good. One six one seven. that's got a, you got yourself an Ebony Maw. An Ebony Maw for this card specifically is a good card. You're happy to have Miek. Great, good to know. Next. Uh, Miek only has one freaking variant. It is the spotlight variant that I honestly kind of like best than less than the base. Um, it bothers me that there's no variants for season pass cards this month. I'm not getting the spotlights for it because of that, but like I was down to two cards. I needed variants for an all a Marl snap. And I guess I'll have a scar variant in a couple of weeks, but I still don't have a Kyra variant. And now I'm not going to have a Miek variant. And that's completely obnoxious. They're just creating artificial scarcity. And, like, they're not making me spend more. They're making me spend less. They're, like, literally just refusing to take my money at this point. I don't know. This is the Annihilus that will be in the bundle. He's a 5.6, not a 5.7. Sorry, I made this slide show a little bit back. Or I made this slide specifically when I covered uh, the beginning of the season. Annihilus is a 5.6. He's still a fantastic card. He's a little bit worse than he was, but he's still a fantastic card. I don't like this variant. We'll review Annihilus in full later on this video. And Phoenix Force, I love this Phoenix Force variant that I'm not going to have. I have the hip, and I think the best Phoenix Force variant is probably the one they gave us in the Phoenix Force season. So I really do enjoy this variant, but it ain't going to be mine, so so be it. Phoenix Force is another card we'll cover toward the end of the video. We're going to cover Annihilus and Phoenix Force in their own section when we look at whether it's worth opening. But first, let's cover Miek. So Miek has following synergies he's really good with discard that whether that be hellcow modok blade colleen wing etc etc there's a million discard cards you know the list modok is the big one because modok in one shot will take it to take me to about a one five in general well if he gets higher than that he's going to be fantastic one five is still really good um repeatable discard has the chance to get me even bigger than that and the only two really repeatable discard cards we have in snap are swarm and apocalypse Swarm becoming two cards whenever it's scarred in Apocalypse, just returning to her. Either one of those will get completely freaking huge with, or will, can help uh, Mia get really huge. So we have upcoming um, Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight, both of whom will be good with Mia. Corvus Glaive is coming next season, Series 5, 3, 4. Discard two cards from hand to get one plus one energy the rest of the game. Um, That energy... Uh, it's worth knowing Miak has to be in play to get it, but if you play Miak on one and this on three, your glaive is just, you've got a one three and then a three four and you're pretty happy. Proxima Midnight's a four six and when it's discarded, it goes to your lowest power location if possible. Um, 
so that four six right like that's just a lot of power um you're adding a bunch of extra stats if you didn't watch yesterday's video i have a tier one dracula discard we're going to look at a version of that list in a minute but i have a, a tier like it won a tournament it's been crushing dracula discard like the classic apocalypse discard so when glaive proxima and miak are in that deck i think that this is a real contender for one of the best decks in the game i think we will finally have like a full discard meta in many ways miak is a weaker morbius um in that he has to be on the board to get the power and morbius can even cost one if you're running ravona and we'll have decks that run ravona with both morbius and miak when we look at decks um end of the turn trigger for power and only one move per turn so like if they um shadow king him and then you modok the shadow king takes away whatever power he had but um he's not not the power from that turn because at the end of the turn is when he's going to move and gain the power so the move is not required for him to gain the power and he only moves once so he's not like busted with raven or print. he doesn't work um at, for end of the game trigger so like if your dracula won't give him an extra move or power and neither will like an invisible woman modok because that's an end of the game and Mia happens at the end of the turn, not the end of the game. The game is over when those cards take effect, which is mildly annoying, but not the end of the world. Just something to know. Um, it's worth knowing that Morbius does get power from him because he's ongoing. It goes on. So he is an easy target for Shadow King fairly often. Um, he's going to run into opponents, Kingpins and Cravens. If they have them on the board, he'll punt. at that point, they're getting they're giving him negative two, and the Kingpin is now at above the rate of one of his moves. Raven is getting plus two, same deal. And Killmonger still exists, and Destroy still exists, and so you should be careful. These decks do not bother to run um, Terra, so there's going to be risk. So we're going to feature every good Meek deck I can think of. If you have an interest in more Meek decks, hop into the Marvel Snap Zone Discord in the podcast chat with the host section. We will help you build decks for your limited collection with any cards you have. Feel free to jump in there. This is full discard. This is Den Den's deck. This is the uh, classic discard deck um, with as many series three cards and below as you can. There's versions that run more series four and five we'll look at, but like all you really need of high series cards here, besides Miak, obviously, is Modok, which is a series four card. Den is the head writer over at Marvel Snap Zone, a friend of mine. He'll be on the podcast this week and a classic, wonderful deck builder. This is the standard discard list that you get before you have a lot of extra high series cards. And it's a really good list. It's very easy to make. It's very uh, strong. Is it my favorite thing to do in Snap? Nah, but it's a good deck. It's definitely a good deck. All right, next up, this is uh, my version of this with a few higher series cards. It basically says, um, okay, so my logic here is, is I cut Swarm because I really want to be able to Modoc on five for Dracula without like breaking my board. Um, Dracula discarding Swarm is completely obnoxious, and if I don't see Colleen or Samurai, or there's another target for Samurai, then I'm in a lot of trouble as far as this deck goes, right? I have to find two extra energy, and two extra energy is hard. I like Storm in my classic discard because either Dokken or Dracula can win that Storm lane, Fairly often, I'll storm. Then on the next turn, I'll go Dak and Blade. Then, um, sorry, Dak and yes, Dak and Blade. And Blade is going to discard the shard. And then I'll just go Dracula. And then I'll play Modok. And then you win the game usually, right? Like that Dracula is going to become humongous, and Modok is humongous, and you're totally fine. Um, Miak at that point should just be a lot of extra stats. If you like, can go turn one, turn two, Miak into Morbius. You're going to probably win that game. I think that this is a really good version of the deck. I know Silver Samurai is another high series card. I know Dockman's another uh, high series card. I believe they're I believe they're both series four now since the drops. But at least it's a bunch of like only one level up high series card. So if you get some tokens, which, and there's a really great token bundle, like I actually don't know if it's on the shop, but there was a really great token bundle. So hopefully you grab that and you can grab one of these cards with. All right, Perry Manilo, uh, wonderful creator from New York has been another New Yorker like me has been highlighting decks like this. This is my take on it. Um, I again, cut swarm for the same reason. This is fundamentally Ravona deck. Again, we're just adding more series four cards. Thankfully we're still not adding series five cards. Your main idea here is that you go, um, Ravona and then you can go Dokken. Then on turn five, you can Modok that Dokken and then sorry, Zola that Dokken. 
and then you can Mordok away the extra shards and win the game that way. But you'll have two 30 power Dokkins, a big old Meek, and hopefully a big old Mobius, Morbius at that point, and that feels like a good way to win a game Marvel Snap. You have an extra turn from Magic to pull the combo off, so if you don't see Ravona, you can still Zola on 6 and Mordok on 7 and be totally fine. This deck's really good, really strong, really fun. I urge you to try it if you have the cards. I think Meek just makes it better, although... Um, you really want to be careful with your discard so, so as to be able to confidently Zola dock in. Oh. All right. Here's another discard. This is fairly similar to the other the last deck, except it's using Ravona for a different purpose here. It's not running Zola. It's instead trying to lock a lane up with Professor X. Um, Professor X on four on a Morbius is usually going to win, right? If you can go Morb and X, even on five, you should be fine. If you go Morb X and then... um. If you go Dracula on four, Morb X on five in a different lane, Monarch on six, you probably win. If Miek is out, that's still really strong, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are just powerful plays and ways to win games of Marvel Snap. Um, Colleen is here literally like just for Wolverine and the shard here, so be careful with her. But it's still a good card, and Sif is meant to hit Dra Apocalypse, so don't play him otherwise. Cool. This is one of the better homes of Professor X. Again, Morbius is win is big enough to win a lane fairly often. Um, you're going to have like a 10-11 power lane. Pretty good. All right. Uh, ZT4 is probably the best discard player in Snap. I don't know how else to put it. He just won a tournament with a different um, discard deck yesterday. That's the one I was talking about at the top. So make sure you check yesterday's video if you're interested in it. He also has been completely kind of crushing with this ver slightly altered version that combines Black Knight and Apocalypse because if you discard... Um, Apocalypse with you still get a giant like what is it 14 power shard so you're pretty damn happy with that if you get the um, Apocalypse discard to give the shard it's totally fine you've just got Infinite Infinite is perfectly fine for either um Dracula fodder or for Black Knight fodder Mick it's reasonably big here same logic as always um and the rest of the deck is fairly self-explanatory it's relatively similar Shang-Chi is phenomenal in discard and i don't know why he hasn't been there before but it is a really really strong play because you can get a lot of your stuff out early and then end, end your game with like shang chi and colleen nonsense or shang chi like on turn uh five and then modok on turn six and then you can just like shut people down but this is going to be a really strong version of the deck um this was running nico nico minoru before miak nico is like a secret sauce to discard but i couldn't figure out what else to cut to be perfectly honest I think this deck is genuinely great and worth playing. All right, next up we have Drew Barry's Hollow Knight. Drew Barry is the king, the guru of new card guides. Like, if you haven't checked out Drew Barry Snap, just the best new card guides. And I know I'm telling you that as you're watching this. I watch Drew Barry. Um, everyone I know watches Drew Barry. He's unbelievable at this. So Drew Barry is great. I like to try and feature one of his decks a week when I do this so that I can see how great he is. Because, uh, I mean, we got to spread love, right? Like, if someone's good at something, don't pretend that I'm the best just for my benefit. He's great. Also, he does custom card reviews, and he's been generous enough to let us do them. We've got a custom card review contest going on right now. Check, um, what is it, Sunday's video for, like, more about that announcement. You can also check the description to this video for a link to his discord where in my section of his discord we have that contest ongoing we're doing hoyoverse as our um as our custom cards for the week all right this is such a weird list but also great great deck name hollow knight is a phenomenal game and meek really fits that with black knight it like double fits um this is your standard discard list right like it's not going to lead you to the hugest meek but if you get a 1-4, one, 1-5, one, 1-6 one, Meek, you're not too sad. Um, and besides that, it's just running like a fairly standard discard list, right? You want to um, sif off something, right? Or blade off something, and then you um, Ghost Rider it back, and then you play the shard. And if you need to discard some stuff, you've got Hellcow, and Hellcow's a 4-8. 4-8 is an awful lot of stats. And as you're doing all these cool, powerful things, Scar gets real cheap. And then you can play a cheap Scar. It's a cool deck. I really, really like the idea of this. and. As always, Drew Barry is ridiculously creative. Love that guy. All right, make a discard movement. This is Tio Justin, a, um, I believe, Spanish language player who makes decks on Snap Zone, so I try and feature him where possible because these are always really cool. This is sort of another combo Miek Black Knight list. Um, 
This one is using Modoc, which I think is really cool. I hit infinite last season. This season I hit bounce. Last season I used a Black Knight discard that also ran Modoc and Apocalypse. It's relatively similar to this list. Um, it wasn't running Silk, but I love the little move package. It's basically running a little move package because you have Craven in it, right? So it throws Silk and Miak in there and just says, I'm just going to have a bunch of extra stats from these cards. And I can win that way, or I can win, um, sorry, I can take a lane that way, and then my, like, Black Knight stuff can take a lane, my Apocalypse stuff can take a lane, and there's just a lot of options for winning the game of Snap. I really think this deck is... All right, we're almost done. This is a discard collector. This is our classic discard, except now we're trying to run collector because Loki is Sag with collector now. So we've got a helicarrier as a way to get like some extra cards, which is just more cards to discard. So if we can Lady Sif off that helicarrier and then Modok off that helicarrier, we've got both a giant collector and a giant Meek. Seems good. Then you try and win with Apocalypse, right? Like it's a it's a fairly um convincing way to win. And then like that's another den. And then we have um my version of this, which is collection notice in which I'm trying to do like 17 things, which probably doesn't work, but will be the ultimate like meme deck right now where like you can make a huge collector of Morbius here and you can mystique to either double your Morbius or double your Wong. And when you have a double Wong, you can Modoc and just make us make me go burr huge with swarm in hand or um, you can gambit. Right. And if you're gambiting, um, then you can drop Odin on top of Gambit and win that way. There's just a lot to like about this deck. I think this is really, really strong. Um, I really, 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 really wanted to fit um Ravona in here, but I just couldn't quite I wanted to fit Ravona and uh Dokken, technically. But I couldn't figure out how I mean I guess you can run them over Mystique. Like that three sixteen Dokken on uh Wong seems like it's probably pretty dead. But yeah, that's the version of the deck this is like straight up what i'm gonna play uh i don't think it's good but i think this is gonna be like one of the more fun decks in marvel snap and snaps a game and i'm infinite so i'm gonna lose some ranks making me go burr with this deck all right so me is very likely to be about a one five and that's very powerful but probably not worth it because there's a lot of one fives like your nebulas of the world get to about one five most of the time the question is can we reliably get him higher can we make him the premium one drop if so, he's going to be great, and if not, he'll settle in as just a good card. Um, we can't tell if he brings a classic discard back, but after yesterday's deck, I'm more and more convinced that he's going to help. The other homes outside of the classic discard seem meme -y. They seem fine, but like they're mostly memes and not like top-notch stuff. Um, next month, we're going to get Proxima, Midnight, and Corvus Glaive. Uh, we talked about what they do earlier, so I think once we get Proxima and Corvus, then he's a significantly better card. And we don't know how much better is kind of the problem here. We just know that he'll be better. So he's series four, four. So like you don't have to feel like that FOMO if you don't get him right. Because at the end of the day, if you miss out on him in that way, because um because he's only three thousand tokens, you can just buy him if you. But series drops happened so maybe your series four tokens are spoken for maybe you want something like phoenix force which we'll talk about in a little bit maybe you want something like hit monkey who should be great with black swan next month so series four tokens are more competitive now than they were and now it gets complicated so as always you should check back friday to be sure and we're going to talk about whether to buy him again at the end we can't make that information fully we, sorry we can't make that decision informed fully I mean, ever, but without our best guess until we look at the other cards. So let's look at the other cards, starting with Phoenix Ward. Phoenix Force, a former season pass card, now series four, 3,000 tokens, four, five, on reveal, revive one of your destroyed cards, and merge with it. That card can move each turn. Phoenix Force is a low win rate card, but a high cube rate card, generally speaking. Although lately, it's been um kind of a mid win rate and a mid and a low cube rate for me because the second I get that Phoenix Force, smart players are just running. Um, I've got a Hercules Phoenix Force deck from our friend Safety Blade that is just straight up rocking the face off people. It is genuinely stellar. Um, this version is great. We're going to look at it in a minute. But the win rate overall is low, right? Like other people are struggling with it. I'm not sure what to do about that. You just have to see your combo. You have to draw consistently. Um, it's better in conquest, right? Phoenix Force is always going to be better in conquest than on ladder. Because on ladder, that low win rate is going to really like make your climb feel long. 
But in Conquest, you're just run for one, run for one, run for one, win, 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 win. And if you see Phoenix enough, guess what? You probably win that round of Conquest. I've gotten Infinity Board with Phoenix before. So I'm a fan of this card. All right. This is Safe Delete's Hercules Force 2. This is his current favorite build. This is the one I was talking about from Sunday's video. We covered this in Sunday's video. If you're interested in it, that's the one with the like completely sick Loki deck in it. Um, but this is the first video we talk about in the deck. It's got two real innovations. First is Dagger. I mean, look, Hercules is fairly obvious, right? Hercules is just like if you throw Fien uh, the Phoenix into Hercules, it moves again. You get the double trigger on Dagger, on Human Torch, or on Multiple Men. That's great. Um, Tribunal says if you have a like bajillion power torch, you're fine. Error protects that torch. And then the other big thing is um, Dagger gives you a third card to destroy. And dagger as a third card to destroy is genuinely stellar. One of the ways you lose with this lose with this deck is not seeing multiple man or torch, and having dagger for that spot has felt phenomenal. Dagger doesn't end up um a quintillion power like them, but it often ends up in the twenty to thirty range, which is plenty to win games of snap as a general rule. All right, um, this is the classic safety Phoenix Force. If you didn't buy Hercules, like most sane people didn't, I bought it because a whale, b content creator. So if you didn't buy it, this is the previous best version. Yes, it has an extra Series 4 card. No, you don't have to have Ghost Spider in this version. Iron Fist does just fine. And the rest is good. It says, um, I've got Phoenix Force or a backup plan of Nim Shuri Nimrod. And Shuri Nimrod's a great backup plan for Phoenix Force, largely because, um, well, largely because you already have the Destroy cards because you have Carnage, Venom, and Deathlock. So why not just try and win off that Nimrod too? Next up, we have Father Newman. Our friend Newman hit a really great win rate with this. This is fairly similar to the previous decks, except it's um running magic for an extra turn to see its combos. I love magic in these decks. I built one of these on my Discord that ran magic, and it was working great for people. But again, it's a slow climb because of consistency. I am, by the way, completely convinced. Completely convinced that these decks want Deathlock, not me. That third uh, destroy is so important. Because sometimes you'll destroy like a torch or a multiple man, and then realize you need to be destroying Nimrod in that game, and you don't have that extra destroy because you used one on an earlier play, and it's a real feel bad moment. So I think that um generally speaking, having Deathlock is more important than having Nimrod. Alright, this is actually the most successful list. I featured this uh at some point last week. Bacon Trains is someone I found on Twitter. Um, thank you, Snapdex, for Finding Bacon Trains. Bacon Trains deck is really cool. This is the um, simplest of both worlds version in that it's got the Hercules thing and it's got the Nimrod thing. It's got the Nimrod package, which works just fine, right? It's got the three destroys. It's really consistent. It's really strong. It doesn't get fancy or cute with Gaia. It does have this really cool thing it can do where if it gets Zabu out, it can do something like um, Shuri and, uh, sorry, Shang-Chi and Hercules to end the game. And that's really cool. Um, I've also gotten Shuri Hercules on turn six, which is just hilarious. It's just like, hey, by the way, here's a sudden 12 power, and we'll throw that Phoenix Force over there. It's a very cool way to play the deck. I like it a lot. All right. Our other spotlight card is Annihilus. He's the real draw this week. Annihilus remains one of the best cards in Marvel Snap. Um, that bounce Annihilus list that we're going to look at in a little bit that KM publish pushes all the time is stellar. Uh, the Annihilus package is great in a lot of things. Our friend Ika has this deck called Anature, which is um, a stature Black Bolt deck that also runs Annihilus. Annihilus is not a junk card, it's a package card, which is to say it goes in a deck that runs Hood and Sentry. I don't think it's actually good in full junk decks. In fact, I think it does more to kill full junk decks because you can't really afford to play full junk decks because they run Goblins, and Annihilus beats the hell out of anyone who bothers to run Goblins who's not running an Annihilus deck. So I think Annihilus actually kills Junk, but his package is among the stronger in Marvel Snap. He was nerfed to not affect zero-cost cards. That stops you from playing the actually quite, quite bad debris package. All right, so Zuns is, this is, uh, was for a while the number three, now it's like the number nine. Zuns is the 14-year-old who finished atop the ladder last season. Two points behind Sizer, it's complicated. It's not worth going getting into. I have a whole video on the confusion. but. This is Zun's deck this season. It is basically a deck that says, I will combine the move package with cards like Juggernaut, um, Jeff, uh, Polaris, and so on, 
with centuries and a century annihilus package and try and win that way. Turns out the deck's great. It's capable of competing near the top of ladder, and it is very, very fun. Chong is a thousand percent a necessity, but this is what the kind of like just cool, fun thing you can pull off when you have annihilus. Uh, King Koala does this deck in lockdown. This is just a lockdown y version, it does goose and storm stuff. Um, if you can storm the right lane, that century's void is going to go over. So that's just a really, really easy way to win that lane. If another lane is goosed, yes, you only have one lane to really play, but like a goose around that time, like you can goose on um five with another card, um, and then you can Annihilus on six and you're totally fine, right? Like you end up just winning games of Snap that way really, really easily. So like this deck is genuinely great. It's one of my favorite decks right now. I play it all the time. And it does not work without the Annihilus package. All right, this is um, uh, Yo Woody's deck. AM featured it recently. Uh, the win rate on this is really low, and I've been having this thing happen. I talked about this on the Patreon. I'm going to bring it up here, where a lot of top players' decks right now are really, really struggling with anyone else. Um, I don't know how to, why, right? But Safety's Phoenix Force deck has a really low win rate. For certain players um this deck that woody is able to like climb into the top 100 with is really struggling for other people still a great deck so i don't know what the hell is happening but like okay so i've been killing with buddy's loki deck that has a really low win rate. i don't get it i don't know what's happening but people are winning with decks that are still that have low win rates when the mass the masses get it I got nothing. I don't know how, why, how or why that's happening, but it's a consistent thing. This deck is really good and really fun. It basically says, um, if I can get Thor and Jane and Werewolf out, then I can move a bunch of stuff around. What's Annihilus and Sentry here for? Because they're big stats. Because Hood is big stats. And that's perfectly fine. This got a little worse with that Annihilus nerf because one of the fun things you could do was um, make your spider ham zero and then send that over. But you can still make your hood negative four or your uh, void negative 11 and send it over then. And that works pretty freaking well. It's at least very funny. Um, the rest of this deck is fairly self-explanatory, right? Play werewolf, play a bunch of cheap on reveals, move that werewolf around when it's a tale as old as werewolf. And then this is the best one. This is the one with the 60% win rate, one of the top win rates in the game. This is ultimately a Zabu deck as much as anything else. It's a werewolf deck as much as anything else, but the Annihilus package is phenomenal. The Annihilus package ties, it's the rug that ties the rune together. You could run this um, without Annihilus and just go further into some cheaper stuff like Bishop or whatever, but Annihilus, look, Annihilus per century remains a 26 uh, power play, right? That's humongous. If you're adding a hood in there, you're at um, a 29 power play, and if you're adding a demon, you're at a 36 power play, right? That's just crazy, crazy stats as you're moving werewolf and growing werewolf as you're doing this, as you're controlling them with spider ham or drawing with Nico or pumping things with forge and so on. It's just a very, very fun deck and a very strong deck. That really needs Zebu. Like, Zebu is like the ultimate key to this deck, but you have two basic game plans that sort of mesh. You can win by going um, bounce and then werewolf, or you can win by going Annihilus and then just be huge. So this deck is very cool, very powerful, one of the best in the game. You need Annihilus, which is to say, um, Miek seems like he has good stats, but we're not going to know for sure until next month if he's fully met or not. Phoenix is good and fun, but not great and very inconsistent. Annihilus is fantastic and worth getting. If you need Annihilus, I'd open, like almost period, but I would have opened last month when Annihilus came. I think Annihilus is one of the best decks in Marvel Snap. It's also worth noting that every single week I on Monday, I do a last chance review of cards and my last chance review said, go get Annihilus. Uh, my last chance review says, don't go get Hercules. If you're watching this early Tuesday morning uh, before while Hercules is still there, check yesterday's video for my last chance Hercules. So I think you open for Annihilus basically no matter what. Um, don't bother opening for Phoenix Force unless you're already opening for Annihilus. Don't bother opening for Miak, I don't believe, unless you're already opening for Annihilus. If you get Miak or Phoenix Force on the way to Annihilus, then great. You lucky you. If you have Annihilus, use tokens for Miak, but really wait until Friday. Honestly, though, wait until like next month. See how Miak combines with these other cards. 
to decide if you're going to use tokens on them. Again, unless you need a Nihilus, I think I think if you have Sentry and Hood, you want a Nihilus. Cool. All right. Before we head out, gotta give our thanks to our Patreons. We've got Models Pretty Chill, Father Newman, Inc., Noflex, Mandatory Burnout, Matt Conduit, Good Dog Gamer, Heretic Slee, Mikey Hijinks, DG Winfield, Rob Silverman, Matt H., Rob Reverend, Abigail Giesling, Direwolf, Ocularis, Spike Jones, Louis Antunes, JD McDonaldino, and the Homie Min. Thank you so much for the extra support. If you'd like to be a Patreon, please hit us up on patreon.com slash notjudgments. So much exclusive content, so much great conversation happening there. You want to be a part of it. Don't buy Miak yet. Cool. Unless you need an Nihilus. If you need an Nihilus, then Miak is a happy accident on the way. You better have four caches before you open. I'm going to spend next Sunday doing that guide again, the how to open and optimize your spending guide. I think it's worth its time and it's worth doing that again. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe, like, comment, ring that bell. We will see you tomorrow for another Snap Tech. Snap Tech. Snap Tech. That's what we do every day, right? Snap Techs. Peace.